Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, basic cheat codes for Switch games. So, throughout this video I'm going to be assuming that you have Atmosphere installed, and you should have Edison downloaded, and uh, that should be inside of the Switch folder on your SD card, so that you should be able to access it just like any other uh, normal homebrew application. So for this video I'm just going to be showing you basic concepts for cheat searching, nothing too advanced, uh, no pointers or anything, these are all just going to be uh, static addresses. Maybe I'll make a tutorial later on pointers and uh, other advanced search type if this video gets enough views and stuff, but for now we're just going to be starting with a simple search for just an integer. So for this example I'm going to be doing coins. And the reason I'm doing uh, Mario Maker is because the concepts for this game can apply to a lot of other games since this is pretty much just a basic, standard, traditional game. What I'm going to be showing you today works for basically any value that you know um, exactly the count of. So for example, if you look in the top corner, you'll see I'll have zero coins, three lives. So the method I'm going to be showing you can work to find like the timer, your score, your lives, your coins, or in like a first person shooter, maybe your ammo or your health if that's like a visible number, anything like that. So to start off, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go into the game, load it up normally just like I'm in, and then obtain a certain value of uh, whatever you're trying to look for. So I'm gonna find coins for this example. So you see I have two coins now. So what I'm gonna do now is go down to the home menu and I'm going to go into the album just to load the homebrew launcher and then I have Edison here. As you can see, I already have the starred since you're gonna have to be accessing this a lot. I would recommend starring it. You can do that with the X button and then it'll be the first thing that shows up. So let's launch this. And uh, Edison is basically just a save manager that also happens to have memory searching. So these are all the games I have, but what we want to worry about is we're going to go to the bottom where you'll see cheats. You don't need to worry about anything else on the screen, just cheats. So click, click OK on it. So then when you get onto this screen, you'll see a bunch of information about the game and about the memory layout. So you'll see a heap address. Um, this is basically just a randomly assigned address. That's why a lot of codes are formatted as heap, plus, and then the address. Because you can't actually represent it as like an integer. Because it just changes every single time you boot your console and there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's literally just randomly assigned, so... And that's an anti-cheat thing that Nintendo did, but we can kind of bypass that. So what you're going to do on this screen is click search RAM, and then what will come up is the type. So these are all of the different types that you can search for. Um, if you're a new beginner to this, basically all you need to worry about is uh, U8 through U64, probably honestly not even U64, up to just U32 is what most games would be sufficient for. I'll be giving you a little bit of a walkthrough through all of these types right now. Not all of them, just the ones you should worry about, really. So U8, this is a value between 0 to 255. U16 is a value between uh, 0 to 65535. And then U32 is 65535 to like 4.2 billion or million or something like that. I don't remember that exactly. And U64 is just any gargantuan value that cannot be held in any of these data types. And then a float, this is usually a number that is not a whole number. This, the reason why games use floats a lot of times is because these can be decimal places and really specific things. So for example, your coin count, that, it, that would probably not be a float since that's just, you know, one, two, three, four. But your coordinates, for example, you can uh, press the left or right stick and move just a very minuscule amount each time. So it would be really strange if that was held in a integer. So it's most likely held in a float because floats allow for very precise data. So if you're looking for coordinates or something, that would probably be as a float value. Void, this is for if you're searching for pointers and stuff. Uh, SA, S16, and S32. These are basically the same thing as these, but except uh, these are going to be signed, which means that negative and positive actually matter in these. So if your um, value that you're searching for in-game is like negative 5 or something, you'd probably search with an S8. But if it's positive 5, then you know, you might as well just do U8. But S8 would probably work too if your value was just 5, but I prefer doing unsigned because that's just 
it gets you the most result and it gets you the most accurate ones. And then double, this is basically a float, but except more precise. So you probably do not need to use this. Float would be sufficient, but I think a double might actually be faster to search. I'm not sure about that. I'll have to test that out. Let's just get right into this. I explained them enough. So for my coin count, I'm going to be doing a U32 just because I already know that the address is stored in a U32 and it's much faster than doing a U8. Nintendo generally does not put values directly next to each other, which is why a U32 works because there's going to be a bunch of digits padded with zeros. In my specific case, there's going to be seven digits padded with zeros in the beginning, while a U8 would only have one digit padded with a zero. And that means that the six other ones can be used to store other data but that's generally not how nintendo uh, makes their games and i have quite a few years of experience searching for stuff in nintendo games so let's do a u32 select that and then you can press the right button to go to mode these um they're basically just uh self-explanatory uh, equals means that you're going to be searching for a value that is equal to whatever you enter on this screen right here greater than means you're going to be searching for a value that is greater than whatever you put on this screen less than this allow this doesn't actually work i tried to do this but according to them it allows you to set a minimum and a maximum value which if you wanted to could be done just doing two searches with these that's how i've always done it in the past difference this is basically just it looks for a value that's different not equals equals then or greater than equals then or less than same value or incremental and then this is decremental so the times you would use uh incremental or decremental is if you just gain or lose one coin and you don't feel like typing in the new number on the next screen you could just search for one greater than or one less than but it's good practice to always just know to uh, type the value in because that'll get you more specific results so let's do equals then for this search since we're going to be looking for a value that is equal to whatever my coin count was which is two at this time and then this is where you should basically not even worry about it that much if you're a beginner. Just do heat. But main will also have a lot of good data. This is basically just static values, a lot of uh, game functions and stuff. But if you're looking for something that's changing, chances are it's going to be in heat because a lot of the values in main do not change. So you will not find much with a search. And then RAM, this just takes way too long. So we're not even going to do that. So let's select heap and then value. So my value was two because I had two coins. So I'm going to just type in two and then click OK. And now we can search. So this does take quite a while. Depending on the type of search you did, it can take quite a while. I did a U32 because those don't take as long. A U8 is basically searching for four times as many values as a U32 would be because it has uh, four times as many results in the end. So now uh, you'll see all of these uh, addresses over here. These are all the results. As you can see, 536,000 others. So it would be extremely impractical to us to just try and find the actual address based on this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to press the home button and close out of all that and then go back into Mario Maker. So I still have two coins, nothing changed in game. And now I'm going to collect another one or another two, I guess. So I have four coins now. So now I'm going to go back down to the home menu and I'm going to load back up Edison again and go back down to cheats. And now I'm going to press the Y button to search again. So same data type. You generally do not want to change this in the middle of a search. Nothing good will ever come out of that. Equals then. So I could do greater than because my coin count is greater than uh, two or whatever. I could do less than and I could type in like five or something. But just to keep it simple and not to confuse anyone, I'm just going to do equals because I know exactly what my value was. It was four. But if you did not know the exact value, and let's just say you knew it was less than a certain value, you could do um, a less than search. But just for simplicity's sake, since we already know what the value is, there's no reason to make it more complicated than it is. So again, this is going to take a little bit. It didn't take too long last time. I actually did not even cut that out. That was the actual search time. So this one shouldn't take uh, much longer at all. All right, so it just finished searching, and as you can see, there is a lot less results. It says there's only four additional ones instead of 536,000. But this is also still not where we want to be. We want to have only a couple addresses left. 
So again, I'm going to close out of this by just pressing the home button and then go back into the game. So I'm going to collect more coins. Oh, here's some more coins. So let's get some of these. So now my value is 7. So I can go back into the Edison again by opening the album, Edison. Then we're going to go down to Cheats again. And we're going to do Search again. So again, do not change this mode. You can change this to whatever you want. If you uh, know logically that it's going to find the value that you want. Region, same, and value. This time we have seven coins, so I'm going to type in seven. And now we're going to click search now. And as you can see, only four results show up. So this is usually where you'll uh, want to stop. You could keep going, but the chances of the other addresses slimming down are not very likely. If I had to guess, I would guess probably one of these is like a display address. One of these would be the internal address. And one of these, two of these would probably just be copies of the other two. So let's, let's just change a couple of them. Let's change the first two just to see if we found it. So let's change this to like 50. And just to make sure everything is in sync with each other, let's change that one too. We don't want to change one of them to 50 and then one of them to like 30. Because you just generally want to try and keep the values in sync if possible. I know that's kind of fresh coming from me with these two values still at 7 over here. Uh, we'll just not worry about that. So as you can see, my coins changed to 50. So a common thing that happens is you might see them change to 50, but your coins might not actually change to 50. So I'm going to test that by collecting this coin. And as you can see, it was a 10 coin and it increased to 60, which is exactly where you want to be. If, for example, I got that 10 coin and it changed to 17, then you would know that you did not change the right address because I had 7 coins before I changed it, and plus 7 would be 17, so you know that it was cor you know that one of these two addresses was correct. So now we're basically just going to try and find which one of these two it was, which is pretty easy to do. We're going to keep uh, one of them at 60 and change one of them to, let's say, 80. So let's change this one to 80 and keep the other ones at 60. At this point, it doesn't really matter about keeping them in sync. And as you can see, that worked. So again, you probably also want, would want to test this one to make sure it's not just the display address and make sure um, it actually changed the coin amount. So let's see. Yep, it did. So I have 82 coins and we're all done with searching now. So on your computer, you can write down this address if you want. So I'm just going to do that right now real quick. And again, make sure to write down the heap with it because sometimes you might be searching for stuff and it might be main. Like I said, main is not that common, but just for good practice and just to make sure everyone who sees this code or this address understands that you want to put heap in there. Now what we can do with this code is we can press the X button to freeze this value if we wanted to. Or uh, we could change this to something else. So I actually have not tried this yet. So let's try it and see if it works. I'm going to change it to 99. And then I'm going to freeze the value. So in theory what this should do. Is since uh, Edison probably reacts a little bit slower to memory changes. Than the actual game itself does. So what I would guess would happen is that uh, instant 1-ups would happen. Because every time you get 100 coins you get a 1-up. So what I'm guessing would happen is the game would update to 100, give me a 1-up, and then this would go back to 99. So let's test that out. Doesn't seem to be working, but the, the value is froze to 99. So my theory was actually incorrect. That would work probably in a lot of other uh, games, but just not for this one, I guess. It has worked in the past plenty of times, like with the 3DS and stuff. This might not be very useful, but um, like I said, this can be used to find other stuff in different games. So not just coins, not just lives. So yeah, that's how you find uh, addresses for basic stuff on the Nintendo Switch. So now um, I'm going to meet you on my PC and then I'll show you how you can actually convert these addresses into codes. Alright, so I'm back on my computer and um, I've got the address written down. So this is the same one that we found from earlier that holds the coins. So you can either do this next part by hand or you can use this tool that I made a long time ago. This one uh, is called SX Cheat Tool. I just downloaded it from GitHub, so that's why it's doing that. This is not my main PC. So 
Now uh, what you want to do is you want to go to memory write and then it allows you to write to NSO or the heat. Uh, you probably don't want to do heat or uh, NSO so you're going to want to switch it to heap and then address relevant to heap that is this. So as you can see it says heap plus that is mathematically what relevant to means so pretty self-explanatory that you want to put that there. Value this is whatever value you're going to want to freeze it at. So let's do 99 for this it doesn't have to be but um, I'm pretty sure this is actually hex. I don't remember how I wrote this program, but yeah, it looks like it's probably hex. So that would be 63 in hex. And now we've got this. So what we can do now is make a title for the code. Let's call this uh, 99 coins. And then uh, we can post that or just put that down there. And our text file is almost done. All we need now is just to get the first uh, eight digits of the build ID. So as you can see, according to Atmosphere, um, this is where it's going to load the cheats from. So build ID text, where build ID is a hexadecimal representation of the first eight bytes. Let's uh, save as, let's just put this down here. And I'm going to have to actually look at OBS myself to see what the build ID is. So bear with me on that. And now we can put this in the directory that's mentioned. All right, so then once you've got your text file on your SD card in that uh, directory, then you should be good to go and you should be able to load this cheat up. So again, like I said, uh, the method that I showed you can be applied to basically anything, basically any console. If you find a cheat engine for like the 3DS, this works for CTRPF. You can use this uh, with Gecko.net on the Wii. You can use this on the Wii U with JGeckoU. Basically, this is a universal uh, way to find uh, values and addresses. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, leave a comment if uh, you need any help or if you have any questions. Also, let me know if you want me to make like a, another tutorial on how to make slightly more advanced codes. I could make this a thing where I just uh, progressively, you know, get harder with the codes. So if you guys just want to start at the beginning, if you're a newbie and you just want to learn how to do this, if you want to start at the beginning, I can uh, show you progressively how to make more and more advanced codes. Just let me know if that's something that you're interested in. I don't really want to be spending a lot of time making these tutorials if nobody's going to really enjoy them and use them. So make sure to let me know down below. Uh, subscribe for more videos and stuff like this in the future, and I'll see you next time. Bye.